Welcome to Ask Dan. Today we have a viewer question about sheep. The viewer wants to know how many sheep can they raise on their property? This is a new video series I'm starting on the grass-fed homestead, Ask Dan, where you, the viewer, can write into me, ask me any questions about homesteading, husbandry, harvest and butchery, cookery, or any other topic related to homesteading. I'll answer all of your questions to the best of my ability, and if I feel that I'm not able to, I will outsource to an expert who can answer your question. One of the most common questions I get from viewers is about stocking density of sheep on a particular pasture. How many can I get? Before we get into today's question, I wanna change it a little bit and ask how many sheep should you get? Just because you can fit X amount of sheep per acre on your property doesn't mean you should max out your stocking density. You have to consider, do I have a need for this many sheep? Do you have a market if you're selling lamb meat, do you have enough customers to justify having that many sheep on your property? Just something to think about there. Today's question comes from Mark, and Mark writes, I'm looking to purchase a small farm on 14 acres of property. It has a man-made lake on it. The lake size is about 250 feet by 135 feet. How many sheep do you feel can go on this property comfortably, and how many sections can I divide the property up for proper rotational pasture grazing? How would you work this property with the lake? Do you feel the lake is a benefit for the animals as well? As with many questions in homesteading, the answer is it depends. Your stocking density of any livestock is gonna depend on a lot of different variables. What region you live in, average rainfall, forage quality, what breed of sheep, the size of the sheep, are they small lambs or are they full grown breeding stock? Are you supplement feeding with hay? What season is it? Without knowing all these factors and more, there's no way for me to custom tailor an answer specifically to your situation. However, I can answer this question in a little bit more broad terms. To start with, we break everything down into cow units. The cow unit is the standard for all livestock on stocking density for a certain area. A cow unit is 1,000 pounds of animal. A calf weighing 500 pounds is a half cow unit. A bull weighing 1,500 pounds is 1 1.5 cow units rams that each weigh 250 pounds each is also one cow unit. How many cow units that you can have on your land per acre is going to be determined by your pasture quality, the quality of the forage in there, and how much forage is available in that acre. A book that does an excellent job at explaining all that cow unit stuff in a lot more detail and context is Salad Bar Beef by Joel Salatin. Great book. There are two main ways to go about figuring out your forage quality and thus being able to determine your stocking density. There's the mathematical and perhaps more precise way to gauge pasture quality, and there's also the trial and error process. The first way is through a mathematical process Dr. Woody Lane outlined in his book, Capturing Sunlight, Skills and Ideas for Intensive Grazing, Sustainable Pastures, Healthy Soils, and Grass-Fed Livestock. Dr. Lane takes the reader step-by-step -step through the process by measuring out a patch of pasture, collecting a sample of cuttings from the patch, putting the sample in a paper bag, microwaving the sample to eliminate the water weight, weighing the final product, and plugging the numbers into a formula that will give the reader information that will help determine the stocking density of a particular pasture. Dr. Lane has agreed to come onto the Grass-Fed Homestead to talk about the procedure in more detail, so we will get into this in a future video and actually go through the steps using my property as an example. Hey, quick. Quit knocking into my stuff, dude. You're shaking the camera. The other way to figure this out is through trial and error using the power of observation. What I mean by that is get some sheep, get some fencing, put them out on pasture, and see how long it takes the sheep to eat down the grass in the area that you've given them. Best practice in rotational grazing is moving the sheep daily. So you want the sheep to eat all the grass that's available to them in there in one day. You don't want to give them so big of an area that they leave a lot of the grass behind. And you don't want to give them too small of an area where they eat the grass in less than a day. It's about finding that balance in that sweet spot. So again, we're back to how many. How many should you start with? How many can you put on the land versus how many should you put on the land? If you're just starting, you probably don't need to be doing it for commercial purposes. So you don't need to be getting 20 
breeding ewes with a bunch of lambs that you're trying to sell. When I first got sheep, I started with four. Sheep, like most other livestock, need a buddy. They can't be by themselves. If they're by themselves, they get lonely and depressed and it's just not good for them. Two is the minimum. Assuming you're raising them for meat, how many lambs will be enough for your family? Is it two? Maybe you have a bigger family and you need three or four. Maybe you just wanna raise one for your neighbor as well. I started with four, that was a good number for my situation. I didn't want just two, I thought that was a little small, I wanted more of a flock feeling. More than four felt like a lot to take on my first season, so four just felt good. Initially I put those four sheep in a corral area with cattle panels and it was 16 by 32 feet. There were four little lambs that were maybe three months old at the time, so not that big. So they didn't eat a lot. And it took them about two or three days to go through that 16 by 32 foot area. At six or seven months old, those four lambs would go through that same area probably in less than a day. So again, the age of the animal, the size of the animal is gonna determine how much forage they need. If you're bringing just a few small lambs onto the homestead, I recommend getting maybe like a 100 foot sheep fence from Premier One or 250 footers or a couple hundred footers, whatever's in your budget and give them at least like a 25 by 25 foot area on your pasture, put them in there and just see how long it takes, see how much they eat within a day. From there you can determine do I need to give them more room, do I need to add more fencing, give them a bigger space, or was this too big and I need to shrink it down. And as the lambs get older you can give them more and more space. And if you get to a place on your pasture that the forage isn't as good, you give them more space. If you get to a part on your pasture where the forage is super lush, you can give them a smaller area and they'll have more food per a smaller area. This might all sound very complicated, but it's really not. Once you get the sheep out in the pasture and do your fencing, just observe and you'll figure it out. You'll know what to do. It just takes practice and experience and over time you'll develop that eye and you can just look at a certain area of your pasture and know how many cow days do I have in this certain area. Oh, and a cow day is how many cow units you can have on a one acre area of land for a day. So if on one acre you have five cow days, you can either have five cows on that one acre for one day, or you can have one cow on it for five days. Mark also asked about how many paddocks he could fence off on his 14 acres. And again, that's gonna go back to the stocking density, how quickly the sheep move through a certain area. When I was using portable electric fencing to pasture rotate my sheep, I had my sheep on a six week rotation cycle. So paddock one was on day one and then six weeks later, they were getting back to paddock one again. I had roughly 45 paddock divisions on the acreage I was using, which was roughly about two acres. The reason for that six week cycle is twofold. One is for parasites, it breaks up the parasite cycle. The other reason is to let the pasture rest Mark also asked about the body of water on his property. He referred to it as a lake. I'd probably call that size more of a pond. The question was, does the pond benefit the livestock? And yes, it does, but you don't give the animals access to the actual pond. You definitely wanna keep that fenced off because the animals will wanna go down into the water and all that hoof traffic in and out of the water causes erosion around the edge of it, really increases the turbidity level in the water. And then also the animals are gonna be defecating and urinating in the pond a lot. It could eutrophenize the pond where, and that's where your fecal coliform bacteria gets out of balance and is a little too high for the amount of water in there. But you can still design the pasture to where that water can benefit the livestock where you can extract water out of it and bring that water to the animals, preferably through a gravity fed water system. I don't know what kind of slope you're working with there, but if nothing else, you could definitely use a pump or possibly a siphon to get the water out of the pond and into water buckets where the animals can access the water that way. Mark, I hope all this information was super helpful and I hope that it was also helpful for some other viewers out there that might have that same question. And with that, it wraps up this edition of Ask Dan. If you have a question you'd like for me to tackle on the grass-fed homestead, 
feel free to write it in at dan at grassfedhomestead.com and put in the subject line, Ask Dan. And again, if I can't get you a satisfactory answer, I will find an expert who can do so.